from the U.S. Geological Survey. This is the USGS Oregon Science Podcast. You are watching and listening to the USGS Oregon Science Podcast for Tuesday, May 24th, 2011. In this episode, we take to the water and accompany a USGS field crew as they collect large-scale suckers along the lower Columbia River. Using a boat equipped with specialized shocking equipment, researchers stun nearby fish, allowing them to be easily collected and examined. Join us as we explore how native fish are used to determine the water quality and the ecological health of our local rivers only in this month's episode of the Oregon Science Podcast. Hello and welcome. I'm Steve Sobieszczak. Today we're going to highlight one of the most common and effective tools the USGS uses for collecting fish, electroshocking. Just as the name implies, specialized equipment is used to emit an electrical pulse into the water and stun nearby fish. Think of it as a stun gun, but much less powerful. In fact, the boat-mounted unit in this study runs on only 4 amps and 60 volts of direct current. This provides an immobilizing shock that is considered non-lethal and only stuns the fish for a brief period. Essentially, it gives the boat operator just enough time to turn around and the netter to collect the fish. To help understand this technique better, we decided to set out and observe it in action up close. On May 5th, we joined a crew of USGS researchers to see how fish are shocked, collected, and examined. Lucky for us, the USGS researchers were sampling over a three-day period at three different locations along the lower Columbia River. We caught up with them on their second day in the field at the boat launch in the town of St. Helens, Oregon, about 30 miles northwest of Portland. The lead investigator, USGS fishery biologist Matt Mesa, sat down with us to explain what they were doing. We're here in St. Helens on the Columbia River. We're uh, using electrofishing, uh, which is a technique that uh, we can sort of uh, inject electricity, a mild uh, dosage of electricity into the water that uh, stuns fish. So they float up to the surface so we can net them. And we're using that technique. It's a very common technique uh, used uh, throughout the world. And we're using that technique to, uh, to collect large-scale suckers which is uh, our test animal of choice for evaluating contaminant levels uh, in fish that live in this area. So we've been working in an area near Longview, uh, at Columbia City, or or St. Helens here, and then we have a third site uh, uh, further up the Columbia River near Rooster Rock. So at each place we're collecting these large-scale suckers. Yeah, the reason that we're looking at suckers is because, well, they are a very common fish in the Columbia River Basin. They're relatively long-lived, so they, uh, you know, they can live to be, we think, you know, eight, nine, ten years old. So a big fish like this might be an eight or nine-year-old fish. They spend a lot of their lives in the area where we're working. So if we catch a fish, uh, we're assuming that it's very reflective of the chemicals and, and things in the area where it lives. So that's that's the reason why we chose the large-scale sucker. Uh, plus they're not listed as endangered, they're very common, they're easy to catch. And so they're a good real test animal to look at how contaminated these sites really are. We're going to be taking those fish and we're going to be removing some tissues from them so we can evaluate the concentrations of contaminants they have uh, in, for example, the livers. We're specifically interested in flame retardant chemicals. They call, uh, there's various derivatives or isoforms of these, but we'll also be looking at uh, PCBs and, and all the common types of chemicals that everybody reads about in the paper. So. What the group is really looking at is whether there are any impacts to the health and reproductive condition of the suckers. So there's a whole group of folks uh, looking at various indicators, but so far the data is still coming out. We don't, don't really know yet whether the concentrations of chemicals we're seeing have had any reproductive impacts. 
Now, if we've piqued your interest concerning contaminants in our rivers and streams, including in aquatic wildlife such as fish, then stay tuned, because later this summer we're planning on putting out another video podcast where we characterize the contaminants and habitat of the lower Columbia River. As for electroshocking, that's all we have for today's show. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you want to learn more about electroshocking or any of the other topics we discussed in today's episode, you can find them listed in our show transcripts at our website at or.usgs.gov slash podcasts. If our monthly podcast doesn't feed your need for USGS-related news here in Oregon, you can follow us daily on Twitter at USGS underscore OR. As always... If you have any questions, comments, or even complaints about the USGS Oregon Science Podcast, please feel free to email us at oregonpodcast at usgs.gov. To hear more about other research the USGS is doing around the world, check out any one of our other USGS social media outlets at usgs.gov slash social media. There, you can listen to other USGS podcasts, as well as find links to the USGS on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, and Flickr. This podcast is a product of the U.S. Geological Survey, Department of the Interior.